All right, what's up guys? Today I have another oil analysis. This is the one from early here in 2025. Got it from Blackstone Laboratories. This is the Pennzoil Ultra Platinum 5W30. Um, I've heard a lot about this oil online, a lot from Lake Speed, the uh, motor oil guy. Um, wanted to try it out myself. Wanted to also move to a uh, 30 weight oil, a 5W30 instead of the 0W20, which is what I normally run in this car. Um, so let's go ahead and let's dig into the summary here. Uh, let's dig into some other things with the uh, wear metals and, and what other additives are in the oil and then let's compare it to the Mo tool. All right, so let's dig into the summary here. I'll put it up on the screen for you guys, but let's go ahead and read this. Uh, so it says, Chris, this report looks great. Both of the samples have roughly the same mileage and autocross use, which by the way was about 2,900 miles and 10 autocross events on that also on both of the oils. Both were in spring. Motul was in spring of 2024. This was in spring of 2025. Um, both samples saw roughly the same mileage and autocross use, so it's really nice to see that wear metals held so steady. Aluminum even decreased a little bit, which means pistons and bearings were a little bit better than before. Fuel from, fuel from last time cleared up, and there's no other contamination present, like coolant, moisture, ex or excessive dirt. Low insolubles show good filtration, and the viscosity was on target for 5W30. Uh, moly, boron, and calcium through zinc are additives in the oil. Motul and Pennzoil both work well. Nice results. So that's what they got. Let's dig into the, uh, the wear metals here and then the additives. All right, wear metals, and that's where this gets interesting. So in the Pennzoil, there was three parts per million versus five parts per million in the Motul. Okay. Keep in mind, that's what's in a Subaru engine that's going to wear your pistons, um, the block, bearings, all that sh stuff um, is all aluminum, right? So that's the main thing I'm looking for here. Um, it was five. The universal average is four. Pennzoil netted three. So lower than average. Okay. Um, iron was up. It is now four parts per million versus three. Uh, lead showed up. Don't know where that's coming from in a Subaru engine, to be totally honest. Um, and those are basically all your wear metals. There were two titanium, if that is a wear metal. I'm not even really sure if that's a wear metal. I brought that up last time. Um, so, yeah, there is less wear with the Pennzoil, but keep in mind the Pennzoil was $26 and the Motul was approximately $40 or $45. Um, just interesting, but also. Maybe it's the 5W30, like, you know, the viscosity being higher, the thicker oil is helping out, you know, for the performance use. That could also be a thing. All right, and then looking at the additives here, the additive package. So Molly was about a third, so that's at 82 versus 229 for the Motul. Uh, boron, I think this is, it's 176 parts per million, and that's probably due to a borate ester that is potentially in the Pennzoil, I believe. That's what I read about online. Um, silicon was 11. Again, that might be from like the gasket maker type stuff uh, being, you know, just a little bit less in there. Uh, sodium was three, it's about on average. Calcium was down. So this only had about 950 versus about 12 or 1300. So it has less detergent in it, interesting. Uh, magnesium was a little bit higher, phosphorus about the same, and zinc was a little bit lower, but give or take more, more or less the same here. Uh, just basically the calcium was a little, bit, a little bit lower. That's kind of the difference in the two additive packages. So what do I think of the Penn's oil? Um, it did produce less wear. I mean, that's right on paper. That's what it was showing. Um, what I felt about the oil was that it... It had this audible, like, tinging, pinging. It wasn't as smooth as the Motul. I'll, I'll say that. So I definitely think if you're looking for, like, smoothness, the Motul is 100% there. If you're looking for absolute best wear, maybe the Pennzoil is the way to go. We're not really sure yet because, again, keep in mind that my two tests here were of a 0W20 and a 5W30. So different oil weights. And for what I use it for, I use it for autocross purposes and, and kind of wouldn't say beating on the car, but driving the car, um, higher RPM, second gear, you know, uh, giving it the beans a little bit here that, you know, maybe the 30 weight is better for my application. And that's why I think next time I'm going to be changing to the Motul X clean 5W30 and testing that and seeing how that comes out in the future here. 
probably going to be next year because I want to keep all the variables as best I can keep them, you know, the same. And I want to do that in the spring. I want to give it 10 events and I want to have 3,000 miles on it approximately. I'm probably not going to put 3,000 miles on the car for the rest of this year. But I kind of feel if I did change that oil that it would be uh, it would be a little bit smoother because right now I have Pennzoil oil back in the car and it kind of irritates me a little bit because you can you can hear the difference between the two but on paper it produces less wear what right but like in those certain rpm ranges where you hear it a little bit more kind of like that you know from like 2500 to 3k area that you're often in you do kind of hear it more the, the engine feels a little bit more like clankier and you kind of hear things a little bit more it just kind of irritates me a little bit it doesn't sound as like premium or as good as i think it should sound or as i think it should be sounding period because i've been using motul for you know as long as i've been using it so i um, not sure if i'm going to be swapping uh this year or next year the oil analysis will be coming next year for that one um so say, stay tuned uh, if you like these go ahead like subscribe all that good stuff and i will talk to you guys later see ya